Day, Lion Hearts. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion, and I am excited today. We are in Atlanta. We're doing a special Patreon sunglass vlog for Tanya Lynn Perkins, and we are doing a doozy. When I was a kid, I loved the Karate Kid franchise, the movie starring Ralph Macchio and William Zabka, and uh, I never thought that 30 years later they could bring something like that back and it could be as good, if not maybe better, but they have. Cobra Kai is a series on Netflix that is now in its fourth season. It picks up 30 years after our original Karate Kid series and it kind of flips the script, so to speak, into the TV show where we find out that maybe Johnny was the underdog after all. Maybe Johnny wasn't the one getting bullied. Maybe Daniel was bullying Johnny. So we pick up the story 30 years later where Johnny is now a handyman and his life is in turmoil and he has a son that he doesn't know very well, and Daniel owns a luxury car lot, is living the life, has the most beautiful family, and their worlds are about to collide. So today I'm gonna take you to my favorite locations from the first four seasons. Some of it was filmed in Los Angeles, but a majority of it was filmed here in Atlanta, and I can't wait to go see these locations. So days of tour in the lion, you all jaw guns right now. That's right, he's along for the trip. He's gonna stay at the hotel today because it's very, very cold and breezy here in Atlanta, but uh, we'll pick up with him at the end of the vlog. Okay, Ja? I'm even wearing the appropriate gear for it today. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Cobra Kai. Well, Johnny has just been fired from his handyman job and we see him here at this shopping plaza because he's going into that convenience store right there to buy his pizza. So you can see it's not really a convenience store. It uh, looks like it's part of a hair salon that they've blacked out all the windows and everything. But uh, we see Johnny inside this doorway getting dinner. He's getting a pizza at the convenience store and the guy just grabs it with his bare hands. <laughs> Johnny's like, can't you at least put it on a plate? So he and the guy that worked there are already not getting along and they're arguing. So you can tell he's kind of one of those people that gets into a fight everywhere he goes. So we see Johnny come out of here and he's actually sitting right over here in this grassy area, right here, eating his pizza. The homeless lady that he always encounters is right over here. And uh, he's just sitting there eating his pizza when all of a sudden, his neighbor, Miguel, the little kid, he's also, well, not a little kid, but he's in high school. He's also inside there, and a couple of guys that he knows from school have parked and went inside to buy beer. So while Johnny is out here sitting, eating his pizza, all of a sudden you hear a bunch of commotion, and out of that door that we just looked at, we saw Miguel and the, uh, the other kids, the three other kids come out, and they're yelling at Miguel for screwing up their attempt at buying beer. And Miguel's got Pepto-Bismol for his grandma, so they pour it all over his head right here in the grass, and they basically start beating him up. And since Johnny's car is parked right out here, his red Pontiac, as they're beating him up, they throw Miguel onto the top of Johnny's car, he, where he hits Johnny's car, and Johnny's sitting over there and go, yells at him and gets up, and that's when Kyler, one of the more unlikable people in the entire series is over here and starts yelling and taunting Johnny and calling him an old man, an old loser, eating his dinner at the convenience store. And, uh, and you can tell one of the things that they did in the movie, they put some brick over some of these windows over here for the fight scene so there wouldn't be quite so much reflection. But you end up seeing Johnny unleash on these kids <laughs> right here, which as I'm watching it, you're sitting here going, what the heck is he doing? He's beating up a bunch of miners, but um, as it happens, the police show up and Johnny has just kicked the hell out of all of them. In fact, when 
Kyler has Johnny at a disadvantage. At one point he goes, what's the matter, having trouble breathing? And right before the cops pepper spray Johnny, he says that to Kyler, what's the matter, having trouble breathing? So sadly, Johnny gets arrested and his when he gets out of jail, it's because his stepfather, played by Ed Asner, has gotten him out and gives Johnny a check to get out of his life. And Miguel, seeing what Johnny can do, asks him to train him in karate. Johnny says, I won't be your karate teacher, but I'll be your sensei. So he decides to reopen Cobra Kai. And Cobra Kai was right here where Johnny reopens it. In fact, um, they recently took the sign down. The sign has been up here for quite a while. If you look online from some of the most recent Google Maps, you can see where the sign's still up. But Johnny opens up Cobra Kai over here. Now they didn't film it inside here. They actually filmed it on a sound studio. But we see this numerous times because we see Johnny opening the doors here. And we also see the time when all the kids have seen Miguel beat up the other High schoolers, they all want to join Cobra Kai, so they're all lined up out here waiting to get in. So right here is where we see Johnny hire the homeless lady to be the sign spinner. Somebody has since painted the top of that black, but when they filmed this, this was all still white, and she's standing right there, and Johnny's telling her, okay, I want you to spin this sign and get people to come in. I'll pay you at the end of the day. She says, you're gonna have to pay extra if you want me to show my bits. And it, you know what she means. And he says, no, I don't want you to show your bits. That's the last thing I want you to do. <laughs> so she goes, well, I'm gonna need some meth and a burrito. And he goes, buy what you want with your money. That's how money works. He says, just spin the sign and I'll pay you when I get back. And you can see the, the dojo is right back there behind her. So he leaves her here to spin the Cobra Kai sign and drum up business. But when he comes back, she's up where he always sees her, passed out and the sign's broken half. And we also have a scene here where Johnny is giving Miguel his first fighting gi. And Johnny's car is parked over here by this light pole over here. He's pulling it out of his trunk, giving it to Miguel. And as that happens, his son Robbie is coming to make amends with Johnny and looks around the corner of the dojo over here. He, we actually see him looking from right around this corner because you can see the McDonald's in the background. In the series, this shop right here on the corner is a vape store, so you can see some vape advertisement. But we see Robbie Keane looking around that corner right there, and he sees Johnny giving Miguel, who's one of his enemies, because <laughs> for one thing, he's training Miguel, but Robbie likes Samantha, and Miguel is dating Samantha. So Robbie sees his dad bonding with Miguel and turns around and runs away from here. And then we see this section right here again, right here in between these two little markers, the little divider, Johnny and Miguel are sitting there and that's when Johnny decides to tell um, Miguel about his life with Daniel LaRusso because he's now found out that Miguel is in love with Samantha. So. That's when he tells him the story I started the vlog with, which is that in his mind, he was the victim. That Daniel came, stole his girlfriend, turned everybody against him, got a karate teacher, and then beat him in the championship. So he's basically telling Miguel that Daniel LaRusso is a bad guy right here and that Daniel has ruined his life. And eventually, John Kreese is brought back into the fold and he ends up helping to instruct here, taking it over, actually taking over Cobra Kai. And Johnny eventually starts his own new form of karate called Eagle Fang. But when we see a young Johnny Lawrence having a flashback, well, Johnny's having a flashback to when he was young and how he first discovered Cobra Kai, he sees a bunch of guys on motorcycles with leather jackets and he thinks they're cool. And then he comes here and they had made this look like the original Cobra Kai, which is the one they used is in North Hollywood, California. 
but they decorated this to look like Cobra Kai and we see the motorcycles out front and a young Johnny Lawrence looking in and that's when he decides he wants to be Cobra Kai for the first time. A lot of great scenes right here in this little shopping plaza. Even though they kind of paint Johnny as a life loser through this show, there's something so likable about him, something so identifiable that even though he says a lot of incorrect things, politically incorrect things, hurtful things, there's just something about him that you like and that you keep pulling for through the whole series. Like I said, even though they didn't film the interiors of the Cobra Kai Dojo in here, or Miyagi's place where they end up training Miyagi-Do, they didn't use us for the inside. I was curious as to see what it would look like anyway. All right, this one's taking us a little southwest outside of Atlanta. First season, LaRusso Luxury Auto. Here we are in Oakley Park. Well, in season one, this is LaRusso Auto. LaRusso Luxury Auto. We see this when, uh, well, you can actually see in this show where it was set of LaRusso right across there. Daniel comes out this doorway here numerous times coming out to get in his car that's parked out here. But we also see it after Johnny's car has been hit and run. They brought it here to be repaired. And he shows up getting dropped off right out front here. And then we see him walk all the way around to the front entrance and he goes in to try and get his car back. Well, you can see inside, that is definitely the way it looked in the movie with the red and everything. There would have been a car right there in the dead center and that's when Johnny is trying to get his car, but Daniel runs into him coming right out of those doors right here that you can see in front of us. And he goes, Johnny Lawrence, oh my God. They start catching up and he sees that Johnny's not doing so well, so he takes a look at his car, says that it's gonna cost more to to fix than it's worth so he offers to do it on the house for Johnny and Johnny's kind of uncomfortable doesn't want him to do it but as he's waiting here he sees LaRusso's daughter Samantha come in and uh, sees them hugging and he just can't believe it so Daniel says I'll call you when your car is ready Johnny it's great running into you and hold on one more thing and he goes and gets him a bonsai tree and says everybody leaves with a bonsai so we see Johnny walking towards us to this doorway and he leaves through this doorway. He comes out of here, makes his walk right over here. So as we see Johnny walking towards us with that bonsai tree, all of a sudden he just drops it right here on the ground and lets it break, lets it shatter, and he walks off. But we also see this when Robbie gets a job here, Johnny's son, Daniel doesn't know it's Johnny's son and he's in there where the car was getting ready to move the car and um, Daniel's cousin Louie tells him to start it up and move it. Daniel comes out and yells at him. He's like, why are you starting a car with a loaded showroom full of people? And Robbie comes running out of here to quit and Daniel chases him out of here and goes, hold on Robbie. And Robbie acts like he's going to hit him. And that's when Daniel says, look, I should have heard your side of the story. I'm sorry. And that's when they kind of bond and Daniel apologizes. And then we see this again when Robbie's buddies, who are always stealing things, want to break into LaRusso and Robbie has to fight them. So the fight between Robbie and his friends takes place right here. They want Robbie to break in so they can steal some stuff. Robbie doesn't want to do it. So Robbie's over here and that whole fight breaks out right in front of us with those doors in the background. You can see all that as he's beating up his two friends, former friends. And part of Robbie's training is much like Mr. Miyagi's training where Daniel has him out here washing and waxing all the cars and every way he tries to do something, Daniel comes and teaches him a different way that pertains to doing karate. Gives the same speech too, says, I thought you were gonna teach me karate, but all you're having me do is your stupid chores. <laughs> It's kind of funny because he's an employee here also. And at the time of filming, that sign would have said LaRusso Luxury Auto. Well, our next location is actually up for sale right now. It's the LaRusso house. 
And this is a handful of scenes here throughout the whole series, of course. If it's Daniel's house, you're going to see it a lot. First time we see it is when his daughter's throwing that pool party while Daniel and his wife are out at the country club and they come back and throw everybody out. Then we see it again when Daniel is reminiscing about teaching his daughter karate and he's setting up the dojo, clearing out all the junk that he's put in there and he's going to turn it back into his dojo again. But then when Robbie starts working for Daniel, Cousin Louie tells him to bring the sales reports here. So Robbie ends up coming here that night as a uh, kind of as a joke. He gets pranked. He comes here to drop off the sales reports and he sees Daniel in the back in his dojo doing karate. And that's when we, uh, we get Daniel making the offer to teach Robbie karate. And of course, Robbie is Johnny's son, so he starts doing it to anger Johnny first, but then as they start training and everything, Robbie really starts to like Daniel as a father figure and loves doing the training. And then once Johnny and Daniel become friends again, and well, they're starting to become friends again, Daniel offers to give Johnny a car because his car got demolished. And uh, when they come back from driving the car, they come back to this house and they walk in the dojo, Johnny and Daniel, and Robbie is in there training and that's when everything blows up. We find out that Robbie is Johnny's son. Daniel doesn't know it and he thinks he's being pranked. Johnny flips out because he thinks Daniel's doing it to be a jerk. It's just everybody ends up angry at each other. So, unfortunately, there's the owner is here, and I talked to him, and I said, hey, is there any chance I could go back there since it's for sale and uh, just show the pool and everything? And he said, unfortunately, not today because he has a lot of people back there working and everything, and yeah, so unfortunately, we can't do that, but this was Daniel's house. All right, off to our next location. Now we're heading to a location that is not only in the original movie, but they bring it back for the series of Cobra Kai. So here in Atlanta, this is acting as the Encino Country Club. If you remember in the Cobra Kai series, Daniel invites Armand here after he's been, had his membership revoked for peeing in the showers. Daniel invites him back and his family for lobster night because he wants to talk to him about buying the strip mall that he owns, which is where Johnny's Cobra Kai dojo is in. Daniel's driven past. He's seen that they started up the Cobra Kai dojo again. So he's trying to talk Armand into selling it, or at least it looks that way. Armand doesn't really seem like he wants to sell it because he doesn't trust Daniel. Daniel makes it sound like he wants to open a dealership in Reseda but really what he says later on in the series is that he was just trying to get Armand to raise all the rents like closer to a market value and that sets Johnny off big time but we also see this when Allie comes back into the picture her and Johnny end up here Daniel and his wife are here and it uh, turns into kind of an interesting dinner here we are Westview Cemetery for our next location. All right, finding his grave in here. We're looking for Mr. Miyagi's grave scene. It's been very difficult. I've been here driving around for over an hour looking for landmarks and I cannot find them. But I kind of anticipated this, so I started really early today. Well, it took quite a bit of looking. I've been out here for almost three hours and I finally found our location. Daniel parks his car right here in front of us. I was looking for that tree that is now demolished. You can see part of the tree over there with that uh, white stone with the cross on top. That was one of the landmarks I was looking for as well as that big headstone on the right. So I kept driving around, couldn't find them because part of the tree has you can see blown away looks like it got hit by lightning or something but right about where we're standing here is where daniel is coming to visit mr miyagi and he's saying 
you know, I know it's been a couple of months, but I really needed to come out and get some answers from you. I feel like, you know, you always had the answers, and I thought when I got to be your age, I would have them too. And uh, he's just sitting here with the headstone. As you can see, it's not really here. They put it here for the movie. But he's, there was also a little tree beside it that Daniel's pruning while he's talking to him. And he said, you know, Mr. Miyagi, I've always let my anger get the better of me. Always been a bit of a hothead, but I really, really wish that you were here right now to give me some advice. So we get this great image of Daniel standing right here, over here. In between all these trees and the way that I knew I was in the right spot was because right when they end the shot here they kind of do a wide zoom out and you can see this headstone down in the corner Richard Kelly and this part of the show is really sad because Mr. Miyagi Pat Morita is the only person who well, other than Sato, he was the only main character in the movies that was not able to come back because he'd passed away. And um, they wanted to include him and he runs throughout, his influence runs throughout the entire series. It almost to a point where Daniel can't make a decision, you feel like, without him conferring on what Mr. Miyagi would do. And, uh, and originally when they cast Mr. Miyagi, they didn't even want to see Pat Morita. And he blew them away, winning over that part and was nominated for an Oscar for it, believe it or not. So really cool that they pay homage to Mr. Miyagi here with his fictitious gravesite. So rest in peace, Pat Morita. I can't believe we finally found this and matched it up, but wow, that took a long, long time. But if you're gonna do it, look for these landmarks. So the exteriors of the natatorium were actually the high school in season one. You only see it briefly. They show the interiors of a different school as the interiors, but the exteriors here, we see this when they're getting out of school and Miguel's mom takes off work early so she can take him to the movies and she picks him up right here. But the interiors that they used in here was the pool. Actually, Right up here in this section, it would have said West Valley High School. Let's go on in. So here's our scene. When Miguel wants to learn to kick, Johnny says, yeah, kicking's badass, but you have to learn how to fight and punch first, then I'll teach you to kick. So when it's time for them to learn, they come in here and the lights are off and everything. And Miguel says, wait, what, are we supposed to be in here? And Johnny says, I know the guy that runs it. Don't worry about it. So right here, Johnny ties Miguel's hands at the wrist together and then throws him in the pool to learn how to kick. And Johnny soon realizes, he goes, oh, I probably should have found out if he knows how to swim first. So he pulls him up by the hair right there and tells him, come on, don't be weak. Kick, use your legs, use your legs, kick. So he drops him down in and he's struggling again. Miguel's struggling. Johnny pulls him back up by his hair and he goes, Come on, you little wussy. You can do this. Kick, use your feet, kick up. I'm not gonna help you next time. And he goes down and he's really struggling and Johnny's standing right here and he goes, come on, come on, man, come on. And Miguel kicks his way up. It's pretty cool. He kicks his way up and so he basically teaches himself how to swim and to kick. And he gets out and they're celebrating over here and then all of a sudden you see the lights fly on and the guy who takes care of this place is up there he goes, Hey, you guys aren't allowed to be here. What are you doing? And Miguel goes, I thought you said you knew the guy. He goes, I lied. And they take off running out through there. Very cool. So nice of them to let me film this. Our next location is here in Lakewood Heights, but they make you believe that it's Big Bear, California. So one thing that Cobra Kai does a great job of is including and involving everyone from the previous movies that had any type of storyline. And this one is sadly when Johnny goes to visit his friend from the first movie, Cobra Kai, his Cobra Kai buddy, Tommy. Tommy, we remember because he's the guy during the tournament that says, 
Get him a body bag, yeah! <laughs> Does that part, that's great. But uh, sadly, when they bring him back in this, in real life, the actor was, was dying. And so that's what they put in the script, that all of the Cobra Kai's, the original Cobra Kai's come back to visit Tommy in hospice and they decide they're gonna break him out for one last time for one night of fun. They get on motorcycles and they ride through Big Bear up here to the ideal sports bar. And they have their motorcycles parked out front. Let's see if we can go inside and show you what all happened in here. So they would have basically been sitting in a table located right about here because you can see the edge of the bar right there while they're talking and this is when Johnny's telling all the guys, the old Cobra Kai, that he started Cobra Kai back up and they're saying, what? Johnny, that was terrible. That's, you know, that almost ruined our life. Look at what it did to all of us. Look at what Kreese did to all of us. And Johnny says, well, I actually brought Kreese back, but don't worry, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make everything okay. And so they're all kind of looking at him like, I don't know, Johnny, is that really what you wanna do? You really wanna bring back Cobra Kai? So they're all hanging out here, and then Johnny and uh, Tommy come up here to call next game at the pool tables. And so they come over here, and that's when the guy at the pool table starts insulting them and looks at Tommy and said, this is the ugliest make-a-wish kid I've ever seen. And uh, next thing you know, our classic Johnny Lawrence from this, <laughs> he's been great throughout the whole series It just, you know, erupting on people that deserve it and this is no different so they have that whole fight where all the Cobra Kai guys and it's funny because Bobby is now like a preacher so he's got involved in this and they're all having that fight right here so cool to see and they end up just whipping everybody really cool to see where that scene is because those those were the original Cobra Kai from the first movie they got everybody except for Dutch who is played by Chad McQueen. He was Steve McQueen's son, and he's a, a race car driver and race car owner, and he just didn't have time in his schedule to participate, so they say that he's in prison, but uh, I've heard rumors that he's gonna come back later on in the series. Sadly, it couldn't be for this one, because the actor who played Tommy did pass away right after filming. So in the show, right after they leave here, they go out to the forest and camp for the night and when they wake up the next morning unfortunately Tommy has passed away in his sleep so it's kind of a great moment for them to have one last hurrah of beating up people here the way the old Cobra Kai did. There's some interesting street art for you. So in season three Daniel is in fear of losing his business and so he travels overseas to meet with his parent company to try and save his business and he stops in his old stomping grounds of Okinawa, Mr. Miyagi's village and decides he wants to go to Tomi Green Village uh, or Tomi Village Green and um, has a cab, tells them that's where he wants to go and he gets in the cab and the cab says, when's the last time you were there? And he goes, that's ah, been a long time and uh, I'm gonna show you this is supposed to be in Okinawa. This is supposed to be the former village that we saw in Karate Kid 2. It's actually Kenny's Alley here in Atlanta. This was Tomi Village. Daniel walks in and he just can't believe what he's seeing. He's almost stupefied. It's now a shopping plaza. And when he walks in, he sees a red lobster over here and a Baskin Robbins and they have a gap over here. And he goes over here to like a service center and asks them and they said, Mr. Sato turned the whole village into this. He introduced um, retail into their lives. And he said, what about all the villagers? Weren't they upset? And they say, no, they all got jobs. They all prospered. So he's here just looking around, taking it in. He's kind of sad and upset at first, but then he notices over here on this stage, there's a bunch of girls dancing. And when their teacher turns around, he notices that it's Komiko. Komiko, his love interest from Karate Kid 2 and he gets to 
reunite with her, and she ends up reuniting him with Chosen. Remember Sato's nephew? And she says that he can help Daniel with Miyagi-Do karate. He knows the secret, so kind of cool to see that they still have the, well, it looks like it's a permanent fixture here, the, the stage that Komiko's doing her dance on. But once again, bringing someone back from the past movies, really cool to see. Thank you for visiting the underground. You got it, because now we're moving on. So here we are over at the Atlanta Biltmore Hotel. And the ballroom here and this front entrance, we see the limo pull up to drop off Tori and Robbie. And this is where the West Valley Junior Prom is. Miguel and Samantha are on a date and Tori and Robbie are here and they're all dancing. And of course, every time these guys get together, every time Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang get together, a fight breaks out, so this is no different. Samantha and Tori end up starting a fight, and it gets totally out of control. Oh, look at that cool Kodak sign up there. That's great. Here we are, season four. It's the Atlanta Ice Forum. So we never see the outside of this place. We only see the inside. This is where when Daniel and Johnny are teaching each other their karates, their respective karates, Johnny brings Daniel to a hockey game as part of learning Eagle Fang Karate. So when we see Daniel and Johnny watching the game, it's actually on the breakaway rink. I say that because they actually have two skating rinks here on the premises. So Johnny and Daniel are actually sitting right over here in the bleachers watching the hockey game and um, some action happens right in front of him. That's when Daniel goes, oh, come on, that's spearing. You can't do that. So Johnny starts yelling. So he goes, yeah, come on, ref, that's spearing. So the uh, one of the players gets sent to the penalty box and um, while they're sitting over here, Johnny says, okay, I'm gonna teach you something about my karate. He goes, we're gonna learn it here. Daniel's like, we're gonna learn it here? Johnny says, yeah. So. He yells over, starts harassing the player over here. The guy's like, oh, so your girlfriend do all your talking for you? To Daniel. <laughs> well, he's saying it to Johnny, and Daniel's like, oh, come on, I'm trying to defuse the situation, Johnny. And the guy over here keeps going, yeah, well, come on, if you want a piece of me, anytime. And Johnny goes, oh, he can take you anytime he wants. <laughs> so then we have Johnny and Daniel after the game walking towards us. And when they pass by here, you can even see the lockers and everything. And then as they make their way, right over here, right in front of the vending machines, as they come right here, they end up having the fight where these tables are all at. Because you can see this behind the hockey players, they come from over here. And as soon as they confront Daniel and Johnny. Johnny walks off and Daniel's left here alone. So as they're standing here talking, that's when the hockey players are like, oh, you want a piece of me? You can have a piece of me right now. With Daniel over here. And then one of the hockey players realizes it's Daniel LaRusso from LaRusso Auto and they start commenting about Daniel's wife and that gets Daniel really mad. So as there's Four hockey players right over here antagonizing Daniel. He ends up just going nuts, which is great because he's abandoning his karate. Normally his is all defense. Like you never have offense first. This time he started the offense. So they have an entire really great fight scene right here <laughs> in this whole area right here that takes up, like I said, the whole area of where all the chairs and everything are they have that fight scene and then when it's over Daniel is victorious over all of them and Johnny comes walking from over here he had went over to get himself something to eat left Daniel to fight alone now that's our last location of the day and as I promised let's go find Joster and there's my buddy I missed you did you miss me at all 
No, not at all. When I walked in, you pretty much mauled me, didn't you? You came running after me and jumped all over me, didn't you? All right, my friends, we're going to call it today. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I want to thank Crystal Rome, Seth King, Jason Graves for making contributions to my channel. And I loved doing this vlog today. This was so much fun getting to see these locations. Like I said earlier in the vlog, it's hard for me to ever believe, you know, if I wouldn't have seen it with my own eyes, that a show could be that good, um, you know, 30 years later. They really do a great job of incorporating fantastic comedy, drama, action, martial arts. I mean, it really has everything in there, and it's well thought out, well written. You never know what's going to happen next, and they always throw you for a curve. So give it a chance. If you've never seen Cobra Kai, I love it, and I hope you enjoyed the locations today. Have a great night, everyone, and goodbye.